Stay tuned at the end, I'll do a little exhaust clip. My first exhaust clip that I did behind the grocery store where I live, I didn't have my external microphone. I just had my regular one that I couldn't bear the wind noise anymore. So this one uh, should get some better results. The only thing I've had issues with is like the actual windscreen that's on it seems to rub on the actual microphone and it creates almost like a wind type noise rather than like the actual wind noise so I had to just pull it away from the microphone a little bit but then it kind of falls off so figuring that out I'll show you my setup um, I'll take a video with my phone of my camera so you can see what I use but yeah it's definitely helped but there are some flaws All right, haven't done an update in a while. Um, I thought I would do one because just the other day I got a Mazda recall notice in the mail. So um, the first recall that um, I've gotten for my particular vehicle, um, apparently it involves the handbrake. And um, I'll include a picture of my recall notice that I got in the mail. basically what it explains and then what to do in the meantime which I will also include a little video here it says just to when you get to your destination before putting it in park pull the e-brake up then put it in park then depress the brake pedal apparently the e-brake can rust and cause the brakes to drag or not grab so like if you have a manual transmission you have to make sure 100 percent that you have it in gear so that it will not roll forward or backwards um, for automatics it's not as big of a deal but the dragging thing definitely would be a big deal worst case scenario i always use my e-brake i mean it's one of those things i got in a habit of doing and um, it's kind of pointless but i guess maybe it might put a little less stress on the parking gear if you're on like a hill but anyways, um, there was just a notice, and then they said they'll send me a further notice um, with uh, what their plans are to fix it. Other than that, um, I was still having issues with the spots that I touched up with the 5,000 grit sandpaper. Um, I can't seem to get it to be clear like the other spots anymore, so it was kind of a little bit of a failure. It's not extremely noticeable, but... I did purchase, um, because of somebody's recommendation in the comments, uh, Chemical Guys, and um, they have like different levels for different levels of scratches, I guess you could say. So they have like a version 32, a 34, 36, and 38. 38 is more of like a polish, and 32 is a compound, and then the others are just in between. So I was using the 38 to polish it because it says that it eliminates scratches from up to 3,000 grit sandpaper and 5,000 is even finer so my assumption is that I would be able to get those out as well so um, I tested it out on my a pillar and it seemed to work but you know after a couple days sometimes if it like dries and it kind of goes away and then the scratch reappears um, apparently though their products are not oil based they're water based so they don't just fill in the scratches they actually correct them so I have another spot on my door that I was just fixing little chips where I use touch-up paint and I kind of sanded them down and um, you could definitely see little um, sand marks there so I'm going to test that out I'll try to get my results on video we'll see if it shows up um, but yeah there was chemical guys sells the product where it's like a certain amount for a 16 ounce bottle if you're gonna buy two of them which I was gonna buy two you're at the point where you might as well just buy the the whole set so I bought all four um, they're huge bottles so I mean I'll have them almost for years to come for like heavy scratches or just light swirl marks um, I plan on just doing my whole car with the 38 to see how nicely it shines um, and then the last thing that I'm trying to figure out is just how um, to get my daytime running lights to work with an LED aftermarket bulb, like a nice uh, looking one. I don't like the yellow look of the stock halogen bulbs, so I was trying to find a nice LED that's like a white or even like a slight bluish color, um, but the DRLs don't turn on because of the amount of voltage or wattage that the bulb requires to turn on, so that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm considering maybe just getting a PIAA uh, blue tinted bulb or just like a clear night tech bulb but 
my experience with those is they end up looking almost like the factory bulbs anyways and they have to return them like I went to AutoZone and I bought those like ZXE bulbs for 50 bucks and they look the exact same and have the exact same output as the factory bulbs under my testing conditions so I return those um, so I just don't want to end up with that again because the LEDs look really good so all right thank you for watching that's my update and um, oh my intake I've left my short ram intake out and I've just been testing it with the factory box in again and for daily driving it seems to I mean feel just as good it, it's just when you're like flooring it um, that you notice the difference so unless you're driving your car really hard all the time um, I would recommend just keeping the stock airbox even my K&N like I didn't even notice much of a difference and if you're getting similar amounts of intake flow with a short ram that you are with the stock box why on earth would the k and n promote more airflow when it's the same set like i it kind of didn't make sense so i or now it does make sense why you don't see a huge difference and um yeah so i'll probably be selling my short ram if anyone's interested just uh, send me a message um, like i said it's not something that i'm not recommending i'm just not recommending it for somebody who drives their car kind of like me a little bit on the easier side tries to get decent gas mileage um, not flooring it everywhere I go um, but if you are somebody that takes your car to the track say or just drives it hard definitely yeah you want to invest maybe in a short ram intake because the airflow was a little bit better in the upper rpm band so so here is what the chemical guy bottles look like I mean as you can see it's huge I mean this will last for a very long time. Each bottle has the version of it on there, the number. Um, honestly, the descriptions on the back, they all sound the same except for just like the title of it. So like the final polish and then very small details in there. Um, I mean, they use like adjectives like heavy scratches or um, very large defect. Like each one is just kind of different words, but they all are similar. But as you can see somewhere on here, it says about the 3,000 grit sandpaper, and the other ones are like 2,000. So you got to really read these to find the small differences in their wording. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.